If this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today we're going to show you how to change the oil and transmission fluid in a 2020 Mercedes Sprinter van. This van has the 3 liter diesel V6 engine and a 7 speed automatic transmission. So this will show you the procedure for this specific application. If your van's got a different engine or transmission, I can't help you, I'm sorry. Going over the fluid, we have some engine oil, and then some engine oil, <clears throat> and then some engine oil, and then we got some diff slash gear oil, and then some transmission fluid, some transmission fluid, some transmission fluid. Uh, this one is transmission fluid and transmission fluid and then a filter. This is the transmission filter and you want to make sure that you get replacement hardware at minimum for the transmission pan bolts because they are a one-time use hardware. And then an engine filter. It's recording. Okay, so we're doing this oil change and this is the oil pan and this is a wrench. And what are you doing? And I have to change this oil. Okay, what size is the wrench? It's, I think it's a 13. Hold on, I don't even know, 13. I didn't get handed it. Um, so this guy just slaps on there, yep. and. He's, every time Bubby tightens oh, the tightening. wrench before he loosens yeah, it. Yeah, hold on, I just had to make sure it was on there before I. You've got three gallons of oil in there, so you wanna make sure you've got a really large drain pan positioned appropriately. Yeah, it was like a little bit far away. Ow, fuck. Nice. And I go. still got it on me. So we took out the drain plug and let the oil drain and we took the filler cap off just to let some air in so that it would flow out nice and nice. And while it's still draining, I'm gonna remove and replace the filter. And the filter lives right here. There's a socket that you can purchase for this cap, but if you've got decent grip strength, you should be able to remove it by hand without the socket. So you can save like 30 bucks. Yeah, it's going. It's like regular oil filter tight, but it's pretty easy to grip it. Still dripping a little, but that's just going to be what it is. Little drip. So there is an O-ring here, and there's an O-ring here and replacements come with the new filter, which is here. And so we're gonna swap all those pieces right now and we're gonna clean this up just a little bit. We lost the video of installing the filter into the cap, but it's pretty straightforward. There's a big O-ring and there's a small O-ring and they should come with your replacement oil filter and just make sure that you lubricate both of the O-rings before you replace them on the filter cap put the new filter in there and screw it back in and just tighten it until it bottoms out. The torque is 25 Newton meters, which you can torque it to if you're into that, if you've got the socket for it. Uh, I'm not really into torque specs. I know when it's tight enough and I've never had an issue. So that's tight. And the next step, which is critically important, ask me how I know, you've got to install the drain plug before you install the new oil. And that goes back in the same hole it came out of. I reuse the crush washer, which is generally frowned upon, but I've never had an issue with it. And this, you tighten until it's tight. Uh, you don't want to crank on it really hard, but make sure you clean up all of the oil that seeped out so that you can tell once you start driving if you've got an oil leak there and you need to tighten the bolt a little bit more. We're going to put fresh oil in and I've got a funnel, so I'll only make a small mess. Almost probably from 2002. It's about that old. Yeah, let's speed this up.
If you've got one of these vans, you know that it doesn't have an oil dipstick. So to check the engine oil level to ensure that it's correct, we are here inside the driver's seat. And now there's a special procedure that I've got on my laptop for uh, navigating the instrument panel so that we can access, there's like a secret uh, hidden menu. I'll show you how to get there. Uh, the engine has to be at a specified temperature range in order to verify that the oil level is correct. Um, it's probably not going to read right right now because we're not parked on flat ground. You need to be parked on flat ground. Uh, but I have verified that our oil level is correct. Uh, but here's how you do it. One thing to note is that this procedure only applies if you've got this set of buttons here on the steering wheel. Um, if you don't, you'll have a different display and there will be buttons on the sides of the display, I think. Um, I think that the menu navigation is more or less the same, just the buttons that you push will be different. Um, but hopefully this helps you out if uh, you have a different instrument panel. Alright, there's a little bit of a glare, but hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. The first thing you gotta do is to turn the van on, but don't start the engine. And you need to go to the total mileage screen, which is at the top of the set of underneath trip. If you hit OK, which I'm calling this the square button OK, um, it's the trackpad when you push it in. So you need to be on this screen, and then when you're on the screen, you press and hold the back button for two seconds, and then you push the trackpad, and you'll get to this secret menu. And then you need to go to vehicle data, and this will give you a whole set of real-time data. And all the way down here, towards the bottom, you'll see uh, oil level and oil temperature. At this point, you need to start the van. You can't access this menu if the engine is already running. If you've got any um, warning messages, like right here you can see our back doors are open, you need to just hit back to clear those and you'll access this screen again. And you need to keep your eye on the oil temperature. I misspoke. The engine runtime needs to be a minimum of 120 seconds and the coolant temperature needs to be greater than or equal to 80 Celsius. Then you will get a value displayed under oil level. Since we only just started our van and you can see it's cold, it's not displaying that. But this will tell you whether you're high or low. And this is telling us we need to add 4.2 quarts to reach the maximum oil level, but like I said, it's not going to read properly because we're on a hill right now. So it thinks that it's low on oil, but it's actually not. And then you can use the value displayed here. See, we're on the uh, third from the bottom over here. When This will tell you uh, how many quarts you need to add. This will tell you how many quarts you need to add. It's just a different wording but you can use this value to either add or drain off oil as necessary to achieve the desired uh, volume of oil. And uh, when you need to exit this, you can just go back, back, and select any of these. And then when you cycle the ignition off and on again, the workshop menu will go away, but if you need to access it again, you just hold the back button for two seconds and then push the trackpad. We are changing transmission fluid. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is a six millimeter Allen wrench to take out the drain plug, which is right here. This one's a four wheel drive van. so. The front drive assembly is going to make this a little bit more challenging than a two-wheel drive. As you can see, this axle shaft is right in my way. Yikes. 
Definitely this still looks pretty clean. Not bad. There you go. Okay, so if you haven't changed the fluid in this transmission before, there is a little uh, tube around the drain hole and that drives, that, that sets the fuel fill level. Um, what most people I've seen do on these transmissions is to lower the pan full of fluid and make a giant mess. I just used this small screwdriver to push that plastic tube off of the pan inside there and now I'm draining out the rest of the fluid so when I take this pan down it's not full of fluid and hopefully I make a much smaller mess. Okay so the next thing you got to do after you've drained all the fluid out is to take off the six transmission pan bolts which are an external Torx size E10. There is a seventh bolt right next to the passenger side forwardmost corner bolt. Uh, this one holds on a small heat shield. So you remove the bolt and then you wiggle the heat shield out of a tab that holds it and you set that aside while you take out the rest of the pan bolts. Alright, so we've got the transmission pan off and as I expected, it still made a mess. Uh, I think it was a little bit more contained than normal, but uh, there was still plenty of fluid in there and I definitely got to wear a little bit, so that was a win. But now, if you look up here, there's a hole where my fingers are, which is an alignment hole for the torque converter drain plug. But the torque converter drain plug is not aligned in that hole. So I've got a 27 millimeter socket a short extension, it's actually a universal joint, but it could be a short extension, and a ratchet on there, and I'm turning the crank pulley bolt until that hole aligns with the drain plug. And you're rolling. All right, now we are going to pull the filter off here. It just kind of sits up in there with a O-ring that holds it in place, and that makes more, more mess. So be prepared. Now we're just going to uh, let this finish dripping, clean up everything, and throw the new filter in so we can get the pan back up there. Per usual, I put lubrication, just the old transmission fluid on the O-ring so that it's nice and slippery. And now we just slide it up in there and it just seats like that. Now we can just clean up our mess here. We'll take the pan out clean it up really well and put it back up. All right, so we put the filter back up, we put the pan back up, and I've got the drain plug for the torque converter loose. It's almost out, and it's probably gonna make a mess once it comes out, because who knows where the fluid's gonna go? Well, like none. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's just gonna, it's gonna do that for a while. We've got our filler hose connected to our pump and then Bubby's gonna go over there and fill up the pump for me so we can get fluid back in this transmission. Yep. The transmission in this van uses ATF134FE fluid uh, and the full fill capacity with draining the torque converter is nine liters. After you've pumped in nine liters of fluid you need to cycle the transmission with the engine running through from park to reverse, to neutral, to drive, to neutral, to reverse a few times and put it back into park. And then you need to warm the transmission up to a specified temperature, which I'll show you how to do now. So now that you've pumped fluid into the drain plug hole in your automatic transmission, you need to verify that the level is correct. Um, there are specified oil volumes, but the to do it by the book, you need to get the transmission to a specified temperature and then ensure that it's full at that temperature. The transmission oil temperature must be between 40 and 45 Celsius or 104 to 113 Fahrenheit. Now if you look at if you look at the info display which will only show while the engine's running 
the transmission fluid temperature gauge is really not that accurate between 68 and 122. You can try and find 104 to 113 Fahrenheit in that range, but it's uh, pretty tricky. The correct way to do it is to access the real-time data using Zentry, which I will show you how to do. I should probably use screen capture software for this, but not gonna. I don't know if you guys can see very well. The screen looks like it's flashing on the GoPro screen, but maybe it's good video, I don't know. Okay, so we are working with a Sprinter 907, because this is a 2020. And we need to go to Zentry Diagnosis. And it runs that guy automatically. So now we wait for Zentry to do its thing. Sorry about the glare over here. So you need to come to this little checklist button, drive systems, fully integrated transmission control. This will access the transmission control module. And then you want to go to actual values here. And I believe it's under temperature sensors on the left here. Oil temperature of automatic transmission, Auto actual value is 40C. So we're good right now to check the transmission level. What I would do, which I'm not going to do because I already did this um, off camera, but now that the transmission temperature is within the specified range because it's 40C to 45C um, and we're right at the low end, you should have plenty of time to do this if um, it's just idling. Side note, to warm up the transmission oil temperature, you need to hold the engine RPM at 2500. Um, it's better for the engine and the catalyst system than letting it idle. So now that the transmission oil temperature is within the specified range, we go underneath the van, pull the drain plug out, or yes, pull the drain plug out with a drain pan underneath it and let any excess oil drain out while the engine is still running and put the drain plug back in and then you're done. If no oil comes out at all, you want to add some until a little bit comes back out, then you'll know that it's full. Make sure that the whole time that you're doing this, you stay within the range of 40 to 45 C on the transmission oil temperature value. And that's about it. Hopefully these instructions helped you change your oil and your transmission fluid and save a boatload of cash by doing it yourself. If you have any questions about how to get through the procedure or something that we didn't cover, just leave a comment below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, and come back in like a week because we'll have a video for how to continue with service B doing the transfer case and differential fluid changes. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.